Hey guys, what's up? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about some really cool privacy and security websites that you need to check out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the list. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to be talking about today is a cool little kind of a website thing you could go to it's called send.firefox.com so basically what this will let you do is it will let you send a file to someone in an encrypted way through a link that automatically expires so what do you do you go to send.firefox.com remember that if you sign into firefox you could send up to 2.5 gigabytes but if you don't sign in you can still send up to one gigabyte which is a pretty decent amount of kind of file storage so the first thing you're going to want to do is click select file to upload and then of course, it's gonna bring up something like this. I'm gonna upload this picture of just some kind of weight vest. Um, you can expire, or you could change the expiration date from one day to five minutes. Um, and you can even protect it with a password. So this is a really cool way to send a file securely. Maybe you wanted to put something on Imager or something like that, but you don't want it to be on Imager. You just want it to send it to someone specifically. This is a secure way to do it and it's a free option and it's pretty cool. So you're pretty much just going to go to this link and then whoever gets this link is going to be able to download it. And like I said before, you can even protect it with a password. Pretty cool, right? All right, guys, the next website on this list at number nine is going to be 10 Minute Mail. Now, there's actually quite a bit of kind of disposable email services that you can use. Some of them are kind of annoying, though, because you're sharing the account with someone else. Some of them are kind of annoying because you don't really know how long they're going to stick around on the website. And some of them are just kind of annoying because the interface is just not very good. But 10 Minute Mail at 10minutemail.com doesn't really have a lot of these common problems. First of all, it's only a 10 minute mail email address, so you could be assured that it's gonna go away after that amount of time. Um, another thing is, is the interface for the website is just really easy to use, and it's completely anonymous here to just start up this free email account that has this time ticker. Now, could this website be a little bit more useful in that you could maybe perhaps make it so the email doesn't expire for a set amount of time? Well, sure. However, the simplicity here is what makes this website pretty easy to use. You can just use this anonymous email for signing up for, say, a VPN provider or some other kind of service where you don't want to give them your email. Just keep in mind that this is going to be locked at 10 minutes. And uh, so let's say, for example, you want to sign up to a website, but you don't want them to have your real email. It might just be better to make some kind of burner email address in that case, maybe some encrypted email provider and have that email address specifically for stuff like that. But if you just want a quick disposable email address, this is one of the best ways to do it. All right, guys, this next one is going to be really useful for checking out files and URLs um, for suspicious kind of stuff you don't want. So let's say you download a file and you're like, mm, I kind of have suspicions that this could be malware. What you're going to do is upload the file and then the website's going to give you information and tell you if it is malware. So let's say, for example, we upload my little weight vest right here. We confirm the upload. Man, this, this weight vest is getting a lot of attention. It's getting a lot of uploads right. Poor weight vest. So this website's analyzing the image and it's gonna give me kind of detection here. So according to this, the file is clean. It doesn't have anything on it. So that's pretty cool. Not only that, but you can also scan a URL. I don't know if it's gonna quite, okay, it does work. You can even scan a URL to tell you if there's any malware or something like that on the website. So I looked up my website, vpnterialist.com, but as you can see here, even now, my website is completely clean. So overall, VirusTotal is a pretty cool website, and you can even search different things here as well if you wanna look at IP addresses and whatnot. And it's just a simplistic website that gets it done. Overall, pretty cool. Have I Been Pwned is a really cool website. Basically what it does is it's gonna show you if your email address has leaked any passwords or if there's any kind of negative associated um, revealed information about one of your email addresses. So I'm gonna enter in my private mail address just to kind of show you guys um, what it will look like. If you have a new email address that's not really associated with anything bad. So it says good news, no opponent found. But let's say if we do something like johnsmith at gmail.com. Apologies for John Smith if someone out there is using this email. But apparently there's 45 pastes, which means these are documented files on the internet where you could find out information about this email account, possible passwords, possible websites it's connected to, and look at all these breaches that johnsmith at gmail.com has been a part of. This is probably because a lot of people are just kind of using this as a generic fake address, but just look at the amount of breaches. Eight tracks is a music website. 
We have huge websites out here like um, Bitcoin Forum, Bitly, Town of Salem is a video game, Cafe Press, Chegg, um, that's a kind of a book website for college students, Daily Motion, DisQuest. You could see how many websites out there are part of data breaches. It's honestly kind of disgusting, guys, to see the extent of data breaches. The fact that these companies just could get away with it and continue existing is honestly very disappointing to me. Now, guys, another follow-up to HaveIBeenPwned.com is SpyCloud. Now, the difference between SpyCloud and HaveIBeenPwned.com, one, more people know about HaveIBeenPwned.com than SpyCloud, but also SpyCloud is more about... Um, watching out for the future. So what SpyCloud would do if you enter in your email and kind of sign up with them for free, it's basically going to email you anytime there's like a new potential leak that you might be part of. So let's say you put in your email, you might be notified maybe one or two, three months later on down the line that, hey, you've, your account has been involved in a possible data breach, so you might want to change your password. Overall, it's a pretty cool website and a service I use and it has come in handy quite a couple of times and it's pretty cool. It does seem to be free to use though. Um, from what I can understand, it looks like there's some more kind of in-depth plans you could look into if you want to do that. But as far as I know, I've not paid for it and I've been able to use their services just, you know, just for the basic way of monitoring your email in the future to make sure you're not part of any data breaches or stuff like that. So basically what you can do, enter in your email, it'll give you some basic information and then you can get access and full details for free um, with the invitation and that's kind of when you'll sign up. Pretty cool. Now this website's really simple but you might not have known about it. It's called wheredoesthislinkgo.com. If you ever seen some kind of shortened link or if you see a sketchy link in an email and you want to know where it goes but you don't necessarily want to click on it, this is a really good website to check out. One thing is guys, you probably never want to be clicking on links you have kind of suspicion or um, that there could be something else behind the link. Clicking on links is one of the easiest ways to get your computer compromised. And I wouldn't click on like barely any links in emails, any links in Discord, any links in Reddit, any place where people could be trying to send you a, a link that will harm your computer or steal your information. Don't click on it. Links are one of the worst ways um, to lose kind of your security. So this website, you can enter in a link, you can see where it goes, and then you'll be able to know more about the link. So this is a Bitly created code. The one reason I did this is just because it's easier to put in. Bitly also lets people who create these links see how many people are clicking on the link and stuff like that. So it's a metric kind of for my business, but you can also expand it. Um, so sometimes it doesn't like work. So if sometimes it doesn't work on this website, I would also encourage you to check out something like Get Link Info. So if you type the link in here on this website, it specifically seems to work better for bit.ly, tiny URLs, and these kind of links, whereas this website is more just for some other kind of generic links, not kind of like those. But if you look here, you can see uh, that the effective URL is going to uh, torguard.net. So this is the URL. This is the effective URL. So you're seeing that it's just simply going to torguard.net, and it is an affiliate code. Um, not something I'm trying to hide necessarily at all, but you can see that it's not taking you to somewhere that, you know, you wouldn't think it would be taking you. People who are clicking on this link expect to go to TorGuard. That's where the link takes you. Another cool website is where it goes. This one shows you a little bit more detail in the actual URL. So as you can see before, it goes to TorGuard.net and that's my affiliate link as well as, you know, the redirect that it's just going to take you from here to here to here. So this is the bit.ly link goes here and that's just going to redirect you to torguard.net so that's pretty cool too so keep in mind where goes.com uh where does this link go.com and um of course if you wanted to use the other one as well um you kind of might have used a blend of some of these things um depending on like the specific type of link um so just kind of keep that in mind so guys if you're tired of google kind of tracking all your data about your searches and giving you personalized search results, you might be interested in another entirely new search engine. So this is gonna be called DuckDuckGo. Now what is good about DuckDuckGo? Well, DuckDuckGo is different from Google in that it positions itself as a search engine that puts privacy first and as such does not store IP addresses or logs user information and only uses cookies when required. Now, what are the cons here? Well, getting personalized search results from Google can actually be really helpful. It kind of it's one of the things that makes Google what it is and makes searching things a little bit more intuitive, but at the cost of your privacy. Now you could use something like DuckDuckGo that uses kind of results from a lot of search engines um, and still get good results. As you look here, you type in Tom Spark Reviews. Um, Tom Spark Reviews, my YouTube channel is actually third on here, so it's doing a pretty good job. Even though Tom Tom Spark is a watch, Tom Spark Reviews is still high up here on the list. 
which is good to see. So this is a really good search engine to check out. Not only that, you could use something like Ecosia. Now, why is this cool? Well, Ecosia works um, by giving you an anonymous and kind of private search engine, um, but the difference is, is that they use their profits to plant trees. So every time you kind of use Ecosia, you're benefiting planting more trees. Um, if this sounds like something that's cool to you, then you might be wanting to replace even DuckDuckGo and Google with it. As you can see here, we're getting pretty good search results as well. I do like a little bit more how it's showing me here videos and the results seem to be a little bit more accurate um, than DuckDuckGo. So this is pretty cool. Um, so we plant trees thanks to income earned from ads. So with Ecosia, you are going to get ads, but it's going to help, um, you know, plant trees. So if that sounds good to you, maybe consider using Ecosia. Another really cool website is called JustDelete.me. And what this website will do is you can look in any service and it's going to show you exactly how to delete your information. So if you're looking at something like 9gag, you can log into your account, go to parameters, and it's pretty much going to tell you for each website how to specifically delete your information and account. Um, and it even rates it by how hard it is. So let's go ahead and look at something like Facebook. And now it's going to specifically tell you here, while you can delete your account easily, some of your data and messages are there to stay forever, just as stated in the website's privacy policy. So once you have a Facebook, once you've been using it, there's nothing you can really do to actually get rid of the information. So that's why it's difficult to use Medium. It seems almost like to me that the difficulty should be um, hard. But if we look here at Amazon, it says to close your account, contact Amazon by email and count. So it looks like here the difference between hard um, is that it cannot be deleted without contacting customer services, whereas medium has extra steps involved and easy is a simple process. So this is a pretty cool website. It's not going to automatically delete the accounts like you might think it does, but it does give you some good information on, you know, how to do so. So Terms of Service Didn't Read is a pretty cool website that helps you understand terms of service. This might not sound that useful, but trust me, it is because reading some of these terms of service is really confusing. Not only that, but it will also show you when stuff has changed. Take for example like Google. It will plainly state that this service may collect, use, and share location data. Terms may be changed at any time at their discretion without notice to the user. So honestly, it's quite shady. It honestly even rates them from class A to very good terms of service to class E, um, which is very bad. So as you can see, some of these services have pretty bad um, you know, terms of service. Finally guys, just because it's me, just because it's my YouTube channel, you're going to also have to check out vpntierlist.com as one of the best websites for privacy and security, mostly because, in my opinion, it is the best tier list, best ranking system for VPNs on the Internet. If you're confused about which VPN to choose, go ahead and come over here. You'll find links to every VPN provider, links to every single review that I've done this year, as well as a comparison table, which is going to break it down for you. Um, that's for encrypted email, actually. So let's go back. Um, if you click on this comparison table, you'll see exactly why VPNs rate the way they do um, in terms of the streaming, support, everything is rated here. This is quite different from any other kind of VPN review site or VPN ranking system. Nothing is as transparent as this is, and it really breaks down each single reason why. Now, if I were you, I would recommend using one of the top three VPNs, TorGuard Air VPN, or maybe even ExpressVPN. Anyways, guys, that completes my top list of privacy and security websites. Let me know down in the comments down below if you have anything I didn't mention, and I'll see you again very soon.